Imagine if by the end of this presentation, everyone in this room died. That's 100 deaths every three minutes, or 17 million deaths every year from infectious diseases alone. What if we could predict, model, and stop the spread of infectious diseases in real time? Solomon Abiola has been making more frequent trips to his native Nigeria to demonstrate his latest project. The researcher from the University of Rochester created a smartphone app he says could change the game when it comes to epidemics like Ebola, which is still affecting thousands of West Africans. All of this in the past used to take days, if not weeks, can now be done in a matter of five minutes. Abiola is presenting the app, called Node, to some other researchers at U of R. He says Node could help slow the spread of infectious diseases and connect patients with health care more quickly. The app is designed to be easy to use. People input their physical symptoms and information about their behavior. And if the answers are consistent with symptoms of the disease, then the user can be connected with health care workers. You need to wash your hands. It is very, very important for you. Let's say you had Ebola, you know, we're like, well, who else have you got in contact with? We have to ask you questions, you know, you don't know where you've been the last 21 days. So you can see it's a very tedious process. We have to drive out to all those towns. You know, there's a very costly human resources and infrastructure that can all be alleviated with a simple application. Abiola says the strength of Node is its ability to provide location data to researchers. So finding a sick person's last known whereabouts when disaster strikes. If we had this application, we know five people were last seen at the grocery store. They're elderly. We need to treat them immediately. Brian Tomaszewski has been studying mapping technology for disaster relief for more than a decade. Both he and Abiola are also thinking about how that sort of information can work closer to home. So knowing if somebody was in Wegmans Saturday at noon, when, say, it's the weekend, a lot of people are out, it's important to know where and when they were, and then where, where do they move next. He started out looking at crisis mapping, as we used to call it, oh, yeah. something the world hadn't really talked about until the massive Haiti earthquake in 2010. The disaster drew in a huge international community. It was a dramatic example of people volunteering to help track and map the needs of those affected. And we saw that again in the recent earthquake in Nepal. And some of the work can be as mundane as just looking at news reports and, and making sure that all the information that is out there is being gathered up and analyzed and made available. It could be looking at tweets that are coming through, like, you know, I need water in this town. Amina Kathari has studied public health messaging over mobile networks in her native Tanzania, East Africa. She says text messages are very effective when it comes to reaching the masses. So you developed an app, yes, that's great, but cell phones keep changing, software keeps getting updated all the time, who is going to update that? Uh, you know, somebody has to be paid or you have to volunteer your time to, you know, fix all the bugs, uh, anything that, that comes up. Kathari visited the continent last year and conducted focus groups to test her theory on using text to inform the community about HIV and AIDS. The topic is no stranger to that part of the world, but she says there's still a lack of knowledge about medication. In addition to free incoming text messages, they also have an inexpensive way to reply with questions. So what happens if I share a bathroom with somebody who is living with, uh, with AIDS? Or if I take care of somebody like that? Um, and so these things should have been sorted out a long time ago. But because this is something that's not news anymore, people don't even think about it. There would be questions about basic things about how you would get infected. Healthcare workers in Tanzania who took part in the study say they like Kathari's idea, but though doctors view the text as a tool to help them do their jobs, they're also realistic about expectations. They don't want to be receiving text messages throughout the day when they're working with patients like, okay, here's a question um, that I need you to answer. So the researchers are working on how to gatekeep those messages and securing additional funding and the support of government agencies. Solomon Abiola is currently back in Nigeria testing the Node app with about 100 users. When he returns to Rochester, he has plans to try it out at home. Right now it's not flu season, but we might employ the same tactics to show, okay, well, how is the flu spreading? You know, where should we be putting up, you know, vaccine clinics? These projects generated in upstate New York could end up alleviating human challenges all over the world. I'm Sasha Ann Simons for the Innovation Trail.